broke my Batmobile. Broke or made it better? <laughs> Now it might just be me, but I get the feeling that we're pretty much spoiled with superhero media nowadays, and I don't think you can blame me for thinking this way. With film giants like Marvel's MCU and DC's DCEU being more popular than ever, animated superhero properties like Into the Spider-Verse and Invincible bringing their genre to new heights, and shows like The Boys offering a new point of view in terms of what's expected out of their premise, there's no doubt that superhero media is bigger than it ever was back in the early 2000s. But however, recently I've noticed a trend in DC and Marvel's TV animation, in that they for the most part don't really put much effort into their TV shows. Personally speaking, DC's current DCAU is mostly hit or miss for me, apart from animated series like Young Justice. And that honestly sucks because both of these studios laid the groundwork for them to make amazing animated series, but at least in my opinion, never went anywhere with them. For DC, they had their original DCAU, and for Marvel, they really didn't hit the mark until around 2009 and 2010, with the series Spectacular Spider-Man and another one not enough people give credit to. Released on September 22nd, 2010, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes attempted to take the then pretty obscure, at least for non-comic fans, team of heroes, the Avengers, and place them in a universe full of heroes, where their tasks were capturing 75 of the world's most dangerous supervillains, and avenging the wrongs caused by them. Lasting two seasons, this was what I would like to call the MCU before the MCU, with many of the lesser known Marvel comic characters having standout episodes, but again, with only two seasons, it never really got the chance to truly thrive, so I've decided to give my two cents on the series and show what it did differently from its MCU counterpart, and what led to its eventual demise. So, welcome to Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes, over before it started. Together, we can avenge the wrongs caused by all these villains. We can be Avengers. Good name. Season 1 of Earth's Mightiest establishes the world and characters we would come to know throughout the rest of the series' run, with a team consisting of Iron Man, the Hulk, Thor, Ant-Man and Wasp, Captain America, Black Panther, and Hawkeye, extremely similar to the first one of the original Avengers comics, give or take a few additions. Story in Earth's Mightiest is kept at the forefront for the most part. We become engulfed in several storylines such as the Breakout, Gamma World, and the Fall of Asgard, all the while introducing its audience to many of the vast worlds in the Marvel Universe, and I'd argue that they do it a lot faster than the MCU. Call it bias, but I get the feeling that the MCU films, while amazing examples of what superheroes have become, have just become an excuse for endless fan servers for the most part. And while I do love these films, I'm afraid that this idea will stick in my mind with every new release. But going back to Earth's Mightiest, the show has the advantage of taking any number of the Marvel Comics locations, characters, and storylines and integrate them into the series, which I gotta say is spectacularly done. The characters all have a sense of personality that kept me entertained throughout the series. Tony's the wisecracking, overly confident, intelligent leader of the team, Bruce Banner's that combination of both brain and brawn that makes the Hulk a compelling character, at least to me, and mans a pure man of science wanting to rehabilitate criminals instead of leaving them back in prison, while Wasps a complete contrast in character, wanting to get in on the action more often than not. Cap's a stoic figurehead unchanged from time, Black Panther is a team made with more wisdom than anyone else on the team, and both the Hulk and Hawkeye are the muscle and tactical one respectively. Each of them fill a unique role on the team that I can't really see being taken by anyone else. Speaking of the characters, an aspect of Earth's Mightiest is that each of them for the most part have arcs that last till the end of the series, whether it be Cap dealing with being a man out of time, Thor being torn between the worlds of Asgard and Midgard, Hank wanting to deal with criminals more peacefully, or any other. In my opinion, they help aid the audience in understanding these characters and gives more depth to them, having them as much more than the heroes that beat up the bad guys. The animation, while it seems to be stilted, really does lend itself to some well-animated fight scenes. The designs look like they leap straight out of a modern-day Marvel comic book, an aesthetic that I appreciate a lot, just filled to the brim with personality. But be weary that a few scenes do use CGI that hasn't aged particularly well, and boy does it Show. But other than that, design work is done pretty well. If I had to pick an episode out of the season that perfectly encapsulated everything I mentioned before, then I'd say that would have to be the two-parter season finale, the fall of Asgard, and a day unlike any other, with both of them having intense action, beautiful art direction, and high stakes with the Avengers having to rescue Asgard from the tyranny of Loki while he has the powers of Odin by his side. An excellent episode if I do say so myself. Overall, Earth's Mightiest's first season does a fantastic job of integrating the world and characters of the Marvel Universe to the small screen. Let's hope things go up from here. 
world is counting on us, and we will not fail. Each of you are heroes, but today, we are all Avengers. Season 2 is where I can say the series starts finding its footing in terms of storytelling. Many new developments can be found for multiple aspects of the series. The addition of both Miss Marvel and Vision to the main Avengers team, the inclusion of arcs like the Winter Soldier, Galactus and the Kree, character changes and development, it's all here. A thing I can appreciate not only in this season but both these seasons is that not one episode exists without furthering the overall plot, whether it be the ending or the episode as a whole. They all serve a purpose to both keep the plot of the series going as well as give us a deep dive into the characters and the personality. Sadly, this season isn't all improvements. For example, a change to the theme song is one that I don't find quite needed. I have no clue if it was a copyright thing or to get viewers up to speed, but it really took away from the powerful feel of the theme with exposition. And the worst part is that it's not necessarily something you would want to have when binging this series all the way through like I did. From this season's 26 episodes, it was a really tough job picking a favorite, but after much deliberation, I'd have to say it would have to go to Along Came a Spider. Ignoring the fact that it has a somewhat controversial actor voicing the webhead, this really did have a great deal of development for Captain America, both the soldier on the outside and also the true hero that resides within him. Much like season 1, season 2 ramps up everything that made the previous 26 episodes so great, with all of them being packed full of content, riveting action, astounding voice acting, and so much more. But unfortunately, this is where our journey with the Avengers ends. So we have a big question to answer. What happened to Earth's Mightiest Heroes after its second season? Well, true believer, to put it simply into one word, Disney. Allow me to explain. Around the time of the Disney Marvel buyout in 2009, Earth's Mightiest entered production. Originally, it was supposed to have about three seasons or so, but because it didn't fit with the same image that Disney was going for, it was effectively replaced with Avengers Assemble, just one of Disney's bland Marvel series. And that's honestly a crushing blow because Earth's Mightiest really had a lot going for it, an interconnected storyline, animation done by Film Roman, and thousands of characters and storylines to pick from, all of which was crushed by the local mega corporation. What makes it worse is that there was a supposedly planned third season. With these screenshots I uncovered, the third season was apparently going to have run-ins with the Impossible Man, Captain Universe, and even a Planet Hulk storyline, which would have been amazing! But even if we never got that third season, we still have a though not perfect, still amazingly told Avengers story that any superhero fan could get behind, and I wouldn't have it any other way. You wanted to know how history will remember the Avengers Iron Man? Well, here's your answer. Iron Man is completely unqualified to lead a team like this. Thor is crazy. The Hulk is a bomb waiting to go off. Ant-Man? less interested in taking down bad guys. And Wasp belongs in the party circuit. And, and you, you, you're a king. What do you care about the Avengers? Are you bored? None of us can do it alone. Together, we have a chance. What we did here, it can change things. The world needs us, but not a shield like us. As a team, on our own. Together, we can avenge the wrongs caused by all these villains. The mightiest heroes in the Nine Realms. Hail Avengers! Hail Avengers! Hail Avengers! Hail Avengers! Not too bad, team. Not too bad yourself, Iron Man. Yeah. Yeah.